going to black. Stand by to roll open, and we're rolling open now. It could open up the door for her litigation to move forward. It's also Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host. And uh, Leah reminded me to say lovely. So lovely co-host, <laughs> Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, good to Hi, see Chief. you guys. Thanks for that. <laughs> I got you, Leah. Don't worry about it. I got you. So uh, <laughs> so we got, a, we got an amazing guest today that was definitely a part of my journey growing up. Uh, his musically, I mean, his music definitely assisted me in my days as a bachelor looking for a partner. <laughs> so... So I appreciate them. And uh, without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. We have an R&D legend with us today. He's a singer, a songwriter, an actor. He's been nominated for a Grammy and won a Soul Train Music Award for Best R&B Soul Male Album. Please help me welcome the one and only Genuine. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried to do it all dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> How y'all doing? Doing good, doing good. That's good, that's good, that's good. It's a little delay, so I don't know what's going on. I was up, but I'm ready. Well, Genuine, thanks so much for joining us. And everybody watching, you know what to do. Drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your love and any questions. That you have for genuine there was live follow us and enable your notifications so you stay in the know about our lineup chief chats are every week and we have a military exclusive lineup just for you so genuine man it's great great to have you on the show thank you brother thank you for having me man i'm um i'm happy to be here you know anytime that i can help the service and you know, all of you guys that keep us safe, I'm always willing to be a part of whatever it is that you guys are doing. So before we get started with our interview, I, I want to see you. I want to I want you. You were showing us all your your paraphernalia because we, we stationed here in Dallas and, you know, we represent the <laughs> Cowboys. So let the people know who the, who the America's team is. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I, I, have, I have two. <laughs> That's what I'm talking. Hey, hey, yeah. genuine. I got blankets on the couch too. You, just in, oh yeah. Just in oh, case yeah. I get in trouble, I got blankets on the couch as well. So I, I feel yeah. you on that one. All day, all day, Cowboys, <laughs> all day. We gonna get him though. We almost got Tampa Bay, but it's all good. We gonna get him. Absolutely. So, can you tell yeah. our viewers where you calling us from today? I'm calling y'all from my home. Um, you know, uh, I'm in Maryland, and you know, I've I've I was born and raised here in the DMV. That's uh, DC, Maryland, and Virginia. We all, you know, you know, push it all together because, you know, here you can go across the street and be in Virginia, and then you can come right across back the street and you be in DC. It's it's weird. So, and that's a, a variety of places. So, it's weird. But yeah, we call it the DMV, and I was born and raised here. So. This is where I stayed. I go to LA and New York and everywhere else to do my business, but I'm coming, but I always come back home. This is this is just where I'm gonna be. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, being in the military long enough, uh, you 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 hear people, especially from Baltimore, they got that mm -hmm. they, they they draw a couple of words here and there, and so you, you could tell All that right. they're from, from that area. Mer Merlin. Yeah. Merlin, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got that. We got a little southern southern thing going on here in DC. So, yeah. But genuine, you've had such a terrific career. When did you really get into music and realize that this was something you could make a living at and spend your life doing? Well, um, early on, I used to uh, break dance, and I had a group uh, called uh, Finesse Five. And so we really was, you know, a dancing 
five man dancing group, but then break dancing and popping kind of kind of phased out a little bit and we didn't really know what we was going to do. So we started, you know, uh, dibbling and dabbling in the music and singing and stuff like that. And a couple of people told us that we needed to take it serious and we got in a few talent shows we won. But the only thing was those guys was in 12th grade and I was in ninth grade. So, you know, after uh, that first year, those guys graduated and had to go on with their lives and they left me all alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, I just still did it, you know, and um, everybody was telling me to continue. So, um, you know, it just really started with the talent shows and winning and, you know, so I didn't win all of them, but, you know, I, I won a majority of them and, you know, I just wanted to stick with it because there was a lot of things going on in the eighties in DC. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that, that, you know, have done their homework. It was a lot of, you know, bad things, killings and drugs and all that. And I really didn't want to, uh, get into that i was around it but i i really didn't want to get into none none of that because i saw all the things that were happening to a lot of my friends and family members and stuff like that so i just stuck with the music and you know people kept telling me that i was pretty good at it so i just continued to pursue it and so once i've done once i did that you know i met um Devonte from jodeci and you know, they were on a tour with MC Hammer and um, Boys to Men. And um, I followed them back to the hotel and, you know, the rest, the rest is history. You know, I sang, danced and all that. So um, it was a blessing. I mean, it was, it was still a long time after that, that I came out, but that was the road where it truly started and where I knew that it was becoming serious. So can you tell us what was your name always genuine through the process or did it change to a, a couple of different? Oh, no. <laughs> my name was uh, M for Red. My name was 50. My name was Tornado. My name was Flash. <laughs> my name was Scrappy. My name, I had so many names, but I've always, you know, as I was coming up, you know, and watching TV and just watching New Edition and Bobby Brown and Michael and all them, I always wanted like that three syllable name. So because that was the chant, ha, uh, 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 uh. So I was okay, like, gotcha. I gotta come up with a name that, you know, I was always thinking ahead. And so when we came up with Genuine, I was like, that's it. Because it always is also represented who I am as a person and who I, you know, strive to continue to be. And so it just fit me well. So I, I kept it. Nice. <laughs> Thanks for sharing all those different names. <laughs> and yes, you've had so fall. many. <laughs> <laughs> you've had so many hits. So can you take us through um, your process for songwriting? Well, the songwriting uh, thing came in uh, as we were, uh, you know, creating in New Jersey, Teaneck, New Jersey, with Devonte from Joe to See, and it was sort of like a school actually, because um, he was looking for, he was starting a new label, and he was looking for artists. I just happened to be that male solo artist that he took to, and that's where I met Missy Timberland, Player Magoo. Tweet, um, all those people, and we used to have uh, writing sessions. Missy would usually win a lot of them, and Devonte and Tim. You know, I wasn't one of the top dogs, but you know, I always looked at that as just education and just, you know, what molded me, you know, to be who I am today. And um, you know, you it just goes to show you that you don't always have to be the best or come in first, your time will come and and my time, you know, came. And so, um, you know, when we was in there writing, you know, we would have all sort of contests, who can write a, a verse uh, the quickest, um, who can write a hook the quickest, you know, and it was, you know, um, great competition, friendly competition. And um, 
I wouldn't give it up for the world. And that's why it's so easy for me nowadays to just write a song. Someone can say, write about anything um, and it won't take me that long to write. So, you know, like I said, I wouldn't give that up for the world. And I thank, you know, Devante and my whole crew back in the days because a lot of artists don't know that's where your livelihood and your money comes from. Really, that's the writing, unless you are one of those artists um, that I am also now that tours a lot. So um, I was so glad back in the days that I wrote 90% of the stuff that you guys hear, I wrote it myself because I've always felt like no one can express uh, me better than me to people. So, um, you know, I really got in there and I started writing. So it was a great thing for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I've started, you know, I paid attention and, you know, paid attention to the, the older cats or the seasoned cats that were in the business and trying to, you know, let me know this is the time where you, this is, this is where you start. And this is how you maintain a lifestyle that you hope to get one day by writing. And so that's what I did. That's awesome. So I know you got a bunch of songs in the arts in your arsenal because, I, like I said, I I grew up. I mean, I was a senior in '97, and so that was a right around a time where you know I'm trying. Well, I, I was going from a boy to a man, and and and, mm -hmm. and 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 playing your song. And I used to make CDs for for young ladies. You know, look, but this was before playlists and all this other stuff. You would make a little, you would burn a little CD, and then you yeah. you play it for her and all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, but you got a ton of songs. In the arsenal, yes. and uh, does does one does one song more special? I know it's like picking your favorite, but is one song more special to you than than, than all the rest? Well, that's a hard one. That's a hard one because you know my whole career, I've been pretty much an open book, and I've I, I wrote from my heart and from the situations that I was going through. So I truly. Um, there's a couple of them. I can't just name one because, of course, I'm going to say Pony because that was my first song. And there's nothing like that first song that you hear in your career. You've been working for so long and now your song is on the radio pumping and playing every 10 minutes. You know, you were hearing it. You you was hearing it. So, um, of course, that one then differences because that was a time in my life where I was at a low a low part in my life um, and I, I, I was really messed up because of my dad and my mom passed. So differences at the time, uh, my my um, wife, I, I mean, I'm not married now, but at the time my wife was there, she, and you know, we had our first baby story and that's why, that's why I said in differences, this is my story and I'm telling you, it's not fiction yeah, yeah. on the show. So, um, so I always like, jabbed in my little music and 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 my writing so uh, you know so um so differences and then two reasons i cry that was um another song that i did for my parents passing and um uh Aaliyah, i did a final warning on 100% genuine um it's, it's, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't yeah. bring it down to one. No, I just can't. I just can't. But if, okay, like, like if I had to, had to, it would have to be Pony because that's just your first song and that's your first big hit. So yeah, it would have to be that. Yeah. And it's fun. It's funny. You say you hear it every five, 10 minutes. Cause about five yeah. minutes before you came on, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Leah and Julie were playing Pony. Uh, when they was watching <laughs> Well, so, so the thing is, this is what they're doing. I, I got a, I got a text about uh, when when I put your promo out there. They were like, "Hey, um, ask them about Pony being in Magic Mike." I was like, "Does it look like I watched Magic Mike? I hadn't seen Magic Mike in my life." So I asked yeah. uh, Julie and Leo, had they seen it? And so they were, they went to YouTube and they pulled up the Magic Mike scene where they got Pony and. And he's grinding right. on the table or some some yeah. crazy just like that. <laughs> yeah, that's the um yeah, that was the you know, ladies, we are mid, so like we're not gonna watch that whole movie. But of course <laughs> I've watched the part that he did my song when he was in the club and all that. And so I was like, yo, he really did a great job. 
you know, he did a great job. But you know, that's not a movie for us, ladies. That's 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 for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but he did a great job on that. Um, I happened to be in one called Chocolate City. Um, and I had to do that in there, and I was so embarrassed because I'm totally not a stripper. I'm, I'm too small. Like uh, you know, I was around big old, big old two hundred fifty pound buff guys, and I'm like, oh my god, what am I going to do? But it was real fun, and um, you know, that's just one of those things where uh, uh, when they told me about it, I was just happy that he was he's a little younger than myself, so anything that's going to help you to continue to be relevant it's always a great thing as far as anything positive and i knew that song that song will be here when i'm long gone that's just one of those songs that's going to live a long time yeah leah looks like she's googling chocolate city right now i, I, I don't know <laughs> That's like an after the show kind of Google session. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. You chat after oh, dark. Yeah. We'll be Googling. Yeah, this. yeah. That's after we get off, then you can right. Google it. I mean, then you can go on YouTube because, yeah, y'all, yeah, you're going to be like, what the world? <laughs> 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 yeah, we were acting up. We were acting up for that one. We were acting up. Yeah. <laughs> it has been, it's been a really hard year, a year and a half um, for um, Americans, um, especially those of you in the music industry. It's been hard to stay connected with fans as things shut down because of the pandemic. How did you stay connected with your fan base during the pandemic and during this hard time? You know what? It really wasn't hard for me because I'm pretty, and it probably really wasn't hard for a lot of artists because once everything shut down, every, everybody went towards the um, internet. And so that's how Versus was made. That's how so many people's podcasts was made and all that stuff. So I was keeping in contact with my, uh, with my fans through Instagram and stuff like that. But, you know, it was hard for me to continue to do that because I'm like a dinosaur. Like I came out in 96, we didn't have all that kind of stuff. And I'm used to people being secretive. Like it took a month usually, or at least three weeks to find out a bit about your favorite artists, whether it be Ebony Jet, um, you know, all of those magazines that were out word up, right on and all those and it just i it took me a while to even get a whole a, a grasp of you know social media because i thought the purpose of being an artist or a star was you know to not allow as many people to have that much access to you so um it was weird for me for a while i really didn't get on until maybe 2004 or something like that so you know that all that stuff was kind of brand new to me and um but you know through the times where we were like last year 20 whatever it was 2020 um that's the only way that i was able to stay in contact and i i i didn't do it all the time i'm just i'm not gonna say tell you oh i'm going i'm going shopping or i'm going to the bathroom or i'm, or I'm going outside <laughs> or I'm, <laughs> like i just it just it's weird to me so um but that's just to answer your question yeah that i'm sorry that i, I was rambling but um uh, uh that's the e that was the easiest way for me to um stay in contact with my fans i even built a stage in my backyard because i was about to start doing um uh performances and you know personal performances and then i was just trying to think of how i can make it nice and all that and also bring on new talent like my uh, my son, my nephews and stuff like that. So, you know, that year we were really thinking, but I'm glad we're getting back to some sort of norm where at least I'm hoping that we are because it's getting crazy, crazy again. So, but that's how I did. I'm sorry for rambling. You're good. And you sort of mentioned earlier, you're back on the road now with shows scheduled through the end of the year. So what does it mean to you to be able to get back out there and play in front of your fans once again? Well, it means everything to me because that's one of the few times that I'm happy in life. You know, I'm pretty much a loner. So I stay to myself a lot. You know, I've learned 
I've learned so much throughout my years, especially being in the business and meeting people and dealing with people. So I just choose to be alone more so than most. Um, but me going on the road, that gives me my release. So I'm always happy to, you know, do performances. And that's pretty much why for the last, I mean, I never slowed down pretty much. Um, but every weekend, pretty much I'm, I'm working 85% of the year on the weekends. So that's a blessing for me because I'm able to travel and see the people that's been supporting me for 25 years. So, um, you know, it's a great thing for me. And, you know, it, it, it gives me my release because no one wants to be alone all the time, but I'm more comfortable being alone. But again, the road um, gives me my release. So uh, I'm very happy when I'm ready to hit that stage and hear the screaming and taking the pictures and all that stuff. It's, it's one of the few times that I'm happy. So, so on the show doing, cause I know back in the day you, you was, you was a dancer. So you used to be yeah. dancing. I know it, it looked like it was exhausting on stage. So it, how you, how you tempered that down a little bit? Uh, I know them bones hey, man, start crack, to. cracking a little bit. Hey, man, hey, man, these little, these little dobby knees. I can't, I just can't keep jumping on speakers. <laughs> <laughs> But I still, you know, I still do my thing and um, I I keep you in, entertained. So, but yeah, I can't be doing those flips and I leave all that stuff up to Chris Brown and all of them now, but they'll be talking like <laughs> me in about 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, you collaborated with some huge folks in the game uh, from Diddy, Timberland, Justin Timberlake, N Nelly Furtado. Um, how do you decide? How do you decide who you collaborate with, and is there somebody out there that you want to work with in the future? Um, what's so funny, man, is that um, I never reached out to anybody. You know, um, at that time, a lot of people, everyone, pretty much reached out to me. I'm, I'm just so not probably what people would think. You know, like like I'm very much a loner. You know what I mean? And I don't like to bother nobody. I don't like to do too much, you know, just enough. Um, you know, I've turned down so much, so much uh, stuff, but I don't know, man. I think I'm weird in some sort of way, but um, I just, I just don't, you know, I don't like to, you know, be a burden to people. So um, anything, uh, well, any songs that I've, I had done with people, they pretty much reached out to me at that time. I, I pretty much didn't, I didn't, I haven't reached out to anybody to do no songs. Gotcha. So is there anybody that you would like to work? With? I mean, you don't have to say it, but I'll say it on the air. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out for you. Okay. <laughs> um, they, they've passed on. So okay. any, anyone else is, um, anyone else, you know, uh, it could still happen. I love Mary J. Blige. Um, I love um, uh, Drake. That's 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 you know he's fairly well not new but you know newer. Um, but you know it was always Mike and Prince, Michael Jackson and Prince for me. You know what I mean? So they've passed. I, I never got that opportunity, but I did get an opportunity to actually meet Prince. Um, after I did When Doves Cry on my first uh, CD, The Bachelor, and then I did uh, She's Out of My Life on 100%, the second CD, because I wanted to pay homage to them while they was here, because now I see people, you know, uh, you know, now everyone is understanding, like, give people their just due and their love while they're here. They, they, don't, they don't know that you're giving them that when they when they gone, you know, so appreciate the people that inspired you while they are here and that's what i did that was my way of giving back to um prince and michael jackson or showing them that they made a, a huge impact on my life it pretty much the reason why i'm doing what i'm doing more so michael than prince but both uh both of them really had a big inspiration on my life after i saw motown 25 michael jackson um do motown 25 that was it for me I, that's when I truly set out to make people feel the way that he made me feel um, watching them. So um, it's definitely Michael and Prince. 
I remember watching that Motown 25 um, special back in the back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're right. That's something that really sticks with you. And yeah. clearly it did for you. You're able to channel that into a huge career. So as yes. you know, we have soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, guardians, Coast Guard members. We have the military community watching with us right now. Do you have any words yes. of hope or inspiration you'd like to share with our heroes today? I just want to tell you guys that I love you. I love you. I love you. And every chance that I get now, I don't know the, um, don't get mad at me. I don't know the, uh, the base, uh, the bases that I was on, but I've done so many, um, uh, new year's Eve shows, Christmas shows, uh, just, just going over when the troops needed me. Um, a lot of artists wasn't doing that and they're kind of scared to do it. And uh, one of the bases that um, I went, I was in Afghanistan, I think it was. And that's one of the bases that um, was taken over now by the Taliban or something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure the chief knows. Kabul or about. Balad. Or yeah. That. Yeah. They wouldn't. I mean, we couldn't even leave the base. And, you know, one of the, uh, you know, one of the higher ups, majors or I forgot his name, but Chiefs and um, he was like, "Nah, you cannot leave this base." And it was really crazy because uh, thirty minutes after we left, at that particular time, this was years ago, they bombed the base, and so it was it was just really crazy. And we landed on the base, so I don't I, I can't remember the name of the base, but we brought in New Year's together, and it was it was amazing. And I took pictures with everybody that was there. I mean, everybody, I stood out there for like three or four hours. So, you know, anytime that I'm able to do something like that and give back, I want them to know you have a, you have a friend in me and, uh, uh, and, and I appreciate the fact that it's because of you guys that we're able to live the way we live. I've been a, 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 everywhere. I've been so many places and, and it's, you know, regardless of what people say, there's not, no place like the USA. You know what I mean? So, you know, I've seen some craziness go on over there, whether it be Africa, Nigeria, um, all of that. And I was like, man, I want to go home. I want to be yeah, home. <laughs> I rather be home. So um, I just want to tell everybody I love them and thank you guys for keeping us safe. Um, all your hard works are, are not uh, gone unnoticed. I, I'm so appreciative. And again, anytime all the, you know, branches, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Army, everybody knows that I'm always down to come perform. That's again, that's one of the times when I'm most happy. So whenever I can do that, y'all got y'all boy. I'm here. I'm yeah. ready to do pony, do it all. So that's what I'm <laughs> doing, man. And, and I love, and I love doing it because again, I love traveling. So, you know, it's a great thing. And I, and all, and, and the last thing is that I know um, how uh, they switch off. You guys stay over there a lot of times, like nine months or something like that. Am I right, Chief? Yeah. Am I? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Some six months, nine months to a year. Uh, just yeah, varies, but. Yeah, so, yeah. So you guys be missing a little piece of home. And so when I come over there, I always, you know, bring it. I always stay on there. You know, usually my sets are supposed to be supposed to be 45 minutes. I usually stay on an hour and a half. You know what I mean? So, you know, <laughs> wow. just, just showing love and just, you know, doing all I can to make them comfortable and happy and giving them a piece of home. So thank y'all. I love y'all. And whenever uh, y'all want me there, I will be there without a doubt. Awesome. Awesome. And we appreciate you uh, for what you've done, you, you know, because your music takes us to a place where we can, you know, have some type of a we can feel like we're at home and B, yeah. you know, it just takes our mind, mind off of all the craziness that we deal with when we're in those type of situations overseas in combat, yeah. those type of things. So we appreciate yeah. you uh, for, for, for the legacy you're leaving. And you yeah. and you talked about being super transparent in your music uh, before. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you said that the life is very, very personal to you. Uh, that that particular mm -hmm. album, and can yes. can you give us some background on why it, you made it so meaningful? Well, that that was a time in my life for the, the life album. Um, my dad committed suicide. He shot shot himself. That was in '99, and then my mom died from cancer the following year. So, needless to say, I wasn't right. I wasn't. Um, I was I was just hurt. So instead of doing a lot of the things that most do i poured my heart and my pain and my soul into my music 
And that's what came out, you know. So when you go and listen to the life, you can you can hear my pain. You definitely can hear my pain. You know, I don't even listen to a lot of the songs because they bring up emotions that, you know, will never leave you. But I'm trying to, you know, not bring up, you know, because it, it hurts too much. So um, that's pretty much why that uh, CD was that meaningful, because if it wasn't for my wife at the time and my kids and music, I kind of don't know if I'd have made it. You know, so um, that's why that CD means probably pretty much the most to me, because that was a time where I proved to myself and a lot of people that I was here to stay for one. But um, but I was also able to overcome, you know, true hardship. So that's pretty much why. Yeah. yeah. And and, and it, it ties so so closely into what we you know, what everybody deals with as human being. But in the military, we we. Um, you know, we, we carry all this this baggage and all this other stuff. And uh, a lot of times we don't we don't seek help or, or get or find a way to kind of release, release all the stuff mm -hmm. that we got pent up. And uh, it's cool that you, you made an album to be able to release all those emotions. Uh, and, and, and I always try to take it back to to uh, our service members to get out there and get help if you need it and, and seek yes. some 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 mental health or, or some type of uh, spiritual help or find a way to release uh all this this stuff that we we carry on a daily basis so uh, like i said it doesn't matter if you're an entertainer or military or you work at circle k or whatever mcdonald's whatever the case may be we're all carrying something and so uh thank you're you right. for sharing that uh that that was that's what you just said is going to help a lot of people so i appreciate that yeah yes yes it I takes courage want for sure yeah, I want people okay. to go get help. Um, I got saved in 2005. You know, I was I was going to, you know, the church, my church from the heart at the time. And I really, you know, committed myself to that. And, th and that also helped. So, you know, you find your strength in a lot of different ways and a lot of s different situations. And that was where I found my strength. So, um, yes, if you're going through something, don't think that you going through it alone. You always have friends, you always have family and just express it because us as men, I know myself, we, we keep a lot of that stuff in. And sometimes, you know, worse things happen. And, you know, I think that's what happened to my dad. And so when that was happening to me, I was able to express it through music and, you know, ask my uh, ministers and all that, what can I do? What should I do? And so I was able to pull through. So any anybody that's going through anything like that, seek help and don't hold it in and know that there's a lot of other people out there that's going through the same thing that you've been going through. You're absolutely right. And what you just said, that takes great courage to admit that you're hurting and to channel yeah. that hurt into something that takes profound courage. Thank you very much for sharing that that piece of yourself with us and your fans. Your fans love you. You have fans right now watching live with us on Facebook. And I'm just going to read a couple of the comments to you. We have Victoria, who is watching from Fort Bragg, and that's in North Carolina. She says hello. And um Mark Jenkins says he is watching. We also have Kaylee. Kaylee Ann is also watching from Fort Bragg. And okay. Christine is watching from Dallas. Uh, Kelly Seals says, I'm a huge fan. I'm so excited to listen and see you in this awesome interview. We are in the Fort Hood, Texas area. And okay. Emily Texas. says, so Texas in the house, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Mark Jenkins, he's left two comments. First, he says, Pony still shut the club down, which he's not wrong about that. But then he also <laughs> says, and Chief, this is for you. That oh, yeah, that's my twin. Mark, Mark Jenkins, that's my twin, man. Me, Mark, me and him Mark go way back. Twin. Yeah. He says we used to call him Magic KO in Biloxi. So I don't know if that's no, true. No, no, no they, they did not. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's true. So I, think it, I, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's not, no, magic no magic. Game. No magic. Uh, no magic anything. Definitely Chief, no magic. I think anything. they're blushing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Let's go, Chief. Are you keeping secrets from us? He keeping secrets from us. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, we need, we need to bring field. Mark on the show. We need to I bring Mark Jenkins field. on the show. One, two, three, four, fifth. <laughs> I think yeah. he's got some yeah. secrets to let out. 
<laughs> Great. That's some good stuff right there. That's fantastic. I also want to share just a couple little comments from Chief's page. Um, uh, Oliver says he's tuning in from Tyndall Air Force Base. That's in Florida, not to be confused with Tinder, but Tyndall. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little inside joke. Yeah. <laughs> and Steven Soto says Chief owes me the man. Ah, oh. that's what's up. Appreciate that, Steven. <laughs> so, Genuine, you've also done quite a bit of acting and appeared in shows such as Parks and Rec and Celebrity Big Brother. Um, and then had several roles in movies. So how did you get into acting? And do you have any new projects on the horizon that you can share? Well, um, the acting thing came also uh, with the music, you know, being as uh, successful as it was at the time. And, you know, a lot of people was telling me like, try to do the acting thing too, you know, diversify, do a little something this and do do that. And so I tried my hand at it. And the only thing that I had always said was, I don't want to get it because I'm genuine. I said, um, I want to go in and read. And of course, I mean, if you got your heart set on me doing it, uh, you're going to give it to me. That's cool. But I want to go through the process that a lot of people that's been in the business had to go to school years for and practice and 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 go through a whole bunch of stuff. I didn't feel like it was right for me coming from music just to get a part because I'm genuine or whatever. And, you know, now that's what's going on now. But we didn't we didn't realize it was always about numbers. Now we realize it with because of Twitter and uh, Instagram and followers and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, but my thing was there people there. There are people that went to school for years for that and, you know, trained and do all that. So, you know, I, I, I get it but I want to still read for it. So everything I got, you know, I read for. So it was, it was, you know, that's just something that I wanted to do and just to earn my keep, earn my part. Excellent. And mm -hmm. before we say goodbye, um, wanted to see if you could remind our viewers, is there anywhere they can go to keep up with you? I know you said, you know, social media is not really your thing, but do you have a website yeah. or is there anything you want to plug um, where we can go to find you and hear about what you're going to be working on? Well, um, you know, I got the Twitter and the Facebook stuff and the uh the snappy chatty what is it, is it <laughs> the, the snap face the snap face yeah right. it's just too many for me so if you want to really know what i'm doing and where i'm going to be go just at genuine on instagram um again i have all that but i'm not i'm not on a lot of them all the time so anything that i'm doing you know is pretty much going to be on instagram um and that's pretty much it. Uh, again, like it's, I'm not. I'm, it's confusing to have so many uh, platforms, and it takes up a lot of time. And I, I'm not just going to be sitting down just telling people what I'm doing. So, on Instagram, you know, um, I always do my shows on the Instagram, and sometimes I go live. This was my first few times going live. Um, I had problems with that. I had to while I was on the stage, I had to ask my background singer how to go live. <laughs> <laughs> you show so, show your age, hey, brother. You show your age. Hey, we know who we right. know people that can help you with that. No, nah, I know it now. <laughs> That's on Instagram, but um, yeah, I mean, pretty much Instagram at genuine. You guys can follow me on that. That's what I prefer anyway. And um, like I said, I do got Twitter and Facebook, and that's at Genuine too, but I'm more on Instagram. So if you really want to know what I'm doing, you know, follow me on Instagram. Awesome. So, and for our viewers, since you, you're gonna plug, I gotta plug too a little bit. Uh, for our yeah. viewers, you can catch this. You can catch this episode on YouTube and Spotify. So, uh, yeah, we we've been transitioning from Facebook and going to other platforms. So, definitely check this interview out. Uh, tell your friends, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Now, all right. uh, yeah, but, yeah, like, subscribe yeah. and put the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I don't, I don't really know how to do it, but I'm sure there's a tutorial. <laughs> 
But uh, genuine yeah. man, it's been a true honor having you with us today. Uh, you said a lot of things that really resonated with me because I feel like we're like we got some type of soul tie because I, I'm kind of like you. Uh, I like being alone, but I'll get out in the world. I just don't want to live out in the world. I, I want right. to go out there and shake hands and kiss babies, then come back and then just oh, sit on my God. couch and just chill. Yeah. Exactly. And I don't like to burden my people man. as well. Yeah. And I don't like to burden people or ask people to, for help and all this other stuff. So, uh, yeah. and I'm a, and I'm like a diehard girl. cowboy fan. So I'm like, man, man, we must be first cousins we or something. Got, we got to be first cousins. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way, brother. So you know, it's all good. Though. I'm glad that you guys asked me to be on here, and I'm appreciative. And I thank you whenever you need me to come back on. I will just get in touch with my people, and it's all good. Absolutely. So uh, this this means a lot to the military community. Your military family appreciate you for you know what I'm saying going uh where a lot of artists weren't willing to go and perform for our our troops uh in in, in the most dangerous places in the world and like I said Absolutely. we can't we can't thank you enough a, a lot of you know a lot of times everybody thanks us and and and, and wants to show us love but uh there, there's a, a lot of folk good folks in the world period yeah. and so yeah. we want to say thank you for being a good person and uh and we wish you all the best. And if you don't mind staying on after the live, I got to get some information from you because uh, uh, I got I want to give you a token of my appreciation. So uh, thank you so much again. Um, we love you. We support you. We appreciate you. All right. Chief chat out. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs>